Hi, this is Dr. Bertola Meshko, the medical futurist, and now I want to talk about what should be in a medical bag today and how portable and innovative diagnostic tools will shepherd us into a new era where you will be the point of care. In its basic form, the stethoscope was invented by a French physician, Dr. Lennec, who published a description of the instrument in 1819. At the time, doctors generally listened to patients' heartbeats and lung sounds by pressing their ears against the patient's chest and back. However, when Lennack had to examine a young woman complaining of heart problems, he thought this would be improper, so he rolled up a piece of paper and put one end to his ear, while the other end to the chest of the patient. And just like this, the stethoscope was born. And in a few years, instead of using pieces of paper, he turned the idea into a wooden hollow tube. Although it was a simple and brilliant innovation, it took time and effort until the medical community accepted it and started using it widely. Listen to what English physician John Forbes said about it. I have no doubt whatever, from my own experience of its value, that it will be acknowledged to be one of the greatest discoveries in medicine by all those who are of a temper, and in circumstances, that will enable them to give it a fair trial. That it will ever come into general use, notwithstanding its value, I am extremely doubtful, because its beneficial application requires much time, and gives a good deal of trouble both to the patient and the practitioner, and because its whole hue and character is foreign, and opposed to all our habits and associations. Think about it. We are only talking about a wooden tube here. Physicians thought it was either a burden, or that, by having that distance from the patient, they would simply lose the art of medicine. It took three decades for the stethoscope to become widely accepted. But today, it's the universal symbol of being a physician. When I talk about digital health to fellow medical professionals, sometimes I have the impression that I have to convince those 19th century doctors about a stethoscope. They are difficult to persuade. They are reluctant to accept digital health technologies and patient empowerment. The sheer amount of innovation on the field can be overwhelming. In the 19th century, physicians had 30 years to adopt a technological innovation, while now there are 30 innovations coming out in a single day. What digital health technologies do is that they make you the point of care. Healthcare without an address. Today, the point of care is usually a hospital or a doctor's office. In the old days, doctors took their famous leather bags and went out to treat upper-class people. Later on, their care extended to the general population as well. When hospitals and practices first appeared, the point of care shifted from the patients to these places. So patients started to meet their physicians at their offices. That shift in healthcare happened only because hospitals had the opportunity to offer access to big and expensive diagnostic devices, which our entire system relies on. The shift taking place now, driven by digital health technologies, is how the point of care comes back to us. And with it, we could solve a major problem looming over healthcare, such as the robust shortage of physicians. If adoption of new technologies fastens up, we could redesign the medical bag for the new century. So let's see what we could put in the medical bag of the 21st century. Handheld ECG. Do you remember those huge devices on those carts printing out ECG on paper? Well, a life core has already made those obsolete with their line of ECG devices called Cardia. They are the textbook example of technology shaping healthcare, empowering and supporting not only patients, but medical professionals as well. Their FDA-cleared medical-grade ECG devices are as big as a credit card, do an ECG in 30 seconds, even on six channels, and they connect to your smartphone, thus data can easily be shared. Blood pressure. Additional cuffs are over 150 years old technologies. Now the company called iHealth has a line of FDA-cleared products that brings us a long overdue upgrade. Their products are light and mobile, while they provide the fastest measurement I have ever seen in the digital device. You can see your results within 20 seconds and it's able to compare your readings to previous measurements to help you make better decisions on prevention and treatment. Multi-diagnostic devices. The medical tricorder from Star Trek is the dream of every medical student. 
Viatom's CheckMe promises to bring that dream into reality by measuring ECG, blood oxygen level, body temperature, blood pressure, heart rate, step count, and many other health parameters with a single device. Needless to say, it is portable, very light, transfers data wirelessly, and it's FDA approved. The digital stethoscope. We have already talked about the stethoscope, and of course, it has a 21st century upgrade as well. The Eco Core digital stethoscope allows physicians to listen to lung and heart sounds in a crystal clear way and digitize the results within seconds. This way, they can also discuss those with among peers. Portable ultrasound. Devices like the Philips Lumify or the Clarius ultrasound scanner bring advanced diagnostic devices to our homes. Only a few years ago, it would have been unimaginable to get ultrasound any other place than a doctor's office. But this is where the promise of digital health comes through. No need for a doctor's appointment, no waiting time, no travel costs. These pocket-sized and user-friendly diagnostic devices can quickly give you a scan and show the results on a smartphone. The Otoscope With the help of a built-in nano camera, the WiskMed Otoscope gives clear views of the eardrum in even small or partially obstructed ear canals, making exams easier and more accurate. And the digital images can be further examined comfortably on a computer monitor without troubling the patient. Vision test. The Newark-based IQ has an MIT patented technology based on instruments and charts used in vision testing. They offer two products, uh, enabling low-cost and accessible eye tests for everyone. The personal vision tracker measures an individual's refractive status including near or far-sightedness and astigmatism, while the IQ inside determines visual acuity. So, both products are portable, easy to use, and relatively low-cost solutions that would fit very well within a modern medical bag. Of course, putting together a medical bag like this is not an all-around solution. We will still need hospitals where we can get more substantial care when needed, but if we adopt these technologies, we have a chance to alleviate the pressure on doctors and solve the worldwide shortage of physicians. Even a non-physician healthcare professional could perform a basic examination on the patient with these, and if they require further analysis, their data can be sent to a hospital to physicians who can decide if the patient is in need of hospital care. That's what the digital health revolution is all about. Keeping up with technology is not going to kill the art of medicine or replace medical professionals, but it is simply going to lighten the artist's burdens. But then, why don't we see these devices in practice? Or in a medical bag? Well, first, many physicians simply don't know about these technologies. And if they do, they think they are not available. They think they exist as moonshots and prototypes in China or the Silicon Valley, while, as I mentioned, most of these are FDA approved and readily available worldwide. If physicians do know about these things, then another preconception is that they can't afford them. But frankly, they are not more expensive than the traditional versions, and as technology progresses, they are getting cheaper by each year. And even if a physician is well educated on all these, I still regularly see a reluctance to change their way of working. As I said, some think new technologies might end the art of medicine that they grew up studying. They believe that putting the distance of a stethoscope between doctor and patient is making their work less efficient. But frankly, these tools are here to help them, to create better relationships with their patients and to get faster results with more data. So, what we can do to usher physicians into a new era of innovative diagnostic tools? Lawmakers need to introduce practical policies that provide incentives for physicians to adopt new technologies, while patients need to raise awareness by bringing their own devices and the data to their doctor-patient meetings. And we all need to support the development of digital health devices that are based on scientific evidence. You can see what digital health is capable of, and we are in the early days of this revolution. We need to continue on this path of progress to adopt innovative technologies to change the point of care to manage our health until one day the medical bag will be obsolete and even a digital tattoo will be able to monitor everything at once. Because trust me, in the future your data will arrive at the point of care before you do. No waiting times or delays, just diagnosis and treatment right away. This is the way. 
If you want to hear more about innovative devices in the 21st century, just subscribe to this channel.